In this lecture, we will learn how we can perform a sentiment analysis with the natural language framework from Core ML. Before we jump into this video, go to training.mammothinteractive.com. Here you can sign up for the Mammoth Unlimited membership and get access to all of the courses we've ever created. That's over 2,000 hours of content. So inside of our content view here, I'm going to create a private variable to store our score. The score will be returned as a string and that's because we have to display it inside of our text object. And we're going to return a sentiment analysis function that we will create. And we can call this a verb, which is typical for functions. So let's call this analyze sentiment. And we're going to pass in here for our input text. All right, because we're going to be performing sentiment analysis on the input text state variable. All right, and now we have to create this function, analyze sentiment. So let's create a private function that is called analyze sentiment. And this is going to take in the input text as a string. Now you can call this something else so that it doesn't get confused with the actual state variable. So let's call this the string to analyze. Then I'm going to return a result of a string which will contain the score. So what we're going to have is use a tagger. So let's create a helper, a helper constant known as a tagger. This will be a private let tagger equals nl tagger. Now this actually comes from the natural language framework. So we do have to import that at the top of the file. We have to import natural language. That way we can use NL tagger and more. Here we're going to pass in the tag schemes that we want to get. So you can see prompt here for tag schemes. And I am going to pass in a list of tag schemes. Even if you just have one like sentiment score, you still need to pass it as a list. Okay, so that will create the tagger for us. Then we are going to use the tagger. All right, so here I'm going to, inside of the analyze sentiment function, take my tagger.string and I'm going to assign it to equal the string to analyze. So we're taking the property of the tagger that is called string and we're setting it to our string to analyze. That is the string that the, that the tagger will work with. Then we're going to grab tagger.tags. We're asking the tagger to perform the tag function at our string to analyze. So just make sure that is string to analyze dot start index. Just make sure you don't have caps. This refers to the position of the first character in a non empty string. The unit that we want to tag is dot paragraph. We want to tag individual paragraphs because we're getting the sentiment of a whole paragraph, not just the sentiment of words. And our scheme will be sentiment score. So you can see that prompt there. The sentiment score is a scheme that scores text as positive, negative, or neutral based on its sentiment polarity. So that's why our scheme is the sentiment score. The result of the tagger here, it's going to give us our sentiment score and then throwaway value. And we can return the sentiment score. So in this function, we'll return sentiment score. Now it may not have a value. So if it has a value, it will be in raw value. Otherwise, we'll have to return an empty string. So you have to handle potentially empty sentiment scores if we're not able to grab one. Okay, and let's see what else we have here. So we are grabbing the sentiments. Just make sure you have a parentheses here to wrap this pair of return values. Then just wait a moment and your errors will disappear. Okay, so then we're using analyze sentiment to have our score, which means that we can already display the score in our text object. So here, instead of just saying score directly, we're actually going to call the score variable that we created. And let's go ahead and resume our preview and we will test this out. Let's just allow the preview to update because now it's going to not display the score initially. That text. So we have to press play if we want to interact with the text field. 
Then we have to enter some text into the text field. So let me just scroll down and enter some text here like I love this app. Look at that. We get a result of 1.0, which means 100% positive is the prediction. So if you like, you can multiply the score by the value of 100. So that way you can see what is the score as a percentage sign. Otherwise, it will just tell you as a decimal. If you say, I hate this app, then you get a score of negative 0 0.6. Now, that is because a negative value of your score means a negative sentiment. So if you have something neutral like, I don't know, well, then it's kind of hard for it to decide. You can say, I don't know. I'm not sure about this app. All right, so that is more neutral, perhaps more negative. That's why it's giving you negative. Now, it's not perfect, but it does quite a good job. Like, I like this app. Okay, that gives you about a neutral sentiment. If you add more, like, it's amazing, it goes up. So the more text you add, the easier it is for the app to analyze the sentiment. All right, and that is how you can perform sentiment analysis. So you can see it's made quite easy thanks to the natural language framework, which abstracts away a lot of the complexity. So instead of having to write all this from scratch, you just have to use the NL tagger, which comes from the natural language framework. You just have to use this NL tagger and pass in what you want to tag. So we wanted to tag the sentiment. Then you just had to set the property string of the tagger and then call the function tag for the tagger to do its job. It's going to analyze the whole string in paragraph units and return for you a sentiment score. And just like that, you get your analysis. So instead of having to write all the machine learning for you from scratch with CoreML and its frameworks like natural language, you can easily build out a sentiment analyzer. Thanks for watching and don't forget to go to training.mammothinteractive.com. Here you can sign up for the Mammoth Unlimited membership where you can get access to over 350 courses that we've created.